And welcome to this special segment of TI Now. We're here with David Hurd, a technology executive consultant and vice chair of TIA. And David, welcome to the program. Hey, it's great to be here. Well, thanks for being here. I want to talk about a number of sort of trends in the industry. Let's start with some technologies. Edge densification, IoT, NFE, really a, a confluence of all these technologies that are trying to get our industry and consumers to what? You know, I started in this industry in mobility when uh, the industry forecast was that we'd tap out about 3 million subscribers here in the U.S. when talk time was $7 a minute, uh, when a mobile phone was $4,000 for a terminal. And if you really think about where technology's gone, it's gone more for business productivity, consumer productivity, and you're really seeing that get amped up by a factor of 10 right now. So if you look at the industry and where things are going, it's really around three fundamental tenets. You know, one is certainly mobile densification, the use of mobility no matter where you are. Wi-Fi, 5G, these are things we're gonna be hearing about for the next five years, all around bringing new technologies together in convergence. The second piece is in order to make that economical and for that scale to hit, you know, you look at your own usage. You know, the average user has got, you know, over 40 applications on their smartphone and they're looking at it, you know, 150 times plus a day. You talk about an ADD kind of culture. Making that work, that mobile densification work, you need huge cloud infrastructure. And that cloud infrastructure has to be virtual. Uh, it has to be virtualized in order to make it economical. It has to be something that, that is very, very attuned to the content in the network and very software defined, very compute centric. And then lastly, it's about connecting a whole new realm of not just humans, but devices to make our world easier, to make our business again more efficient. And that's IoT. So those three things are really coming together to make work and life easier uh, for both the consumer and the business. And I think it's the first time in my career, 25 years in, in technology, where it's really happening at this cycle, at this amplitude, at this pace. And where we're starting to bring on whole new verticals into what, you know, when I started in telecommunications, it wasn't very cool. Now you're having healthcare groups talk about what is their strategy in, in making the network enable their business. Um, you're looking at you know, whole new verticals in the military and others that are really depending on the network that, again, when I joined, was about making long distance phone calls and just now enabling mobility. Uh, David, you talked earlier in sort of the pre-show discussion that we had about um, maybe acting as an, adv uh, as an advisor, not only for um, big carriers, big operators, but also the enterprise as well. Enterprises really need to uh, scale up at an m and level. So it's not only the carriers scaling up their services, but it's also enterprises scaling up as well at the same pace. Why is that? Yeah, if you really think about it, the enterprise, what's happening in the enterprise and what's happening in the, in the kind of uh, overall WAN or wide area network, um, they're beginning to converge. Um, the workflows of what used to happen in the IT world are exactly what every major carrier is going through today. It's how new, new technologies, new services have to flow, both in terms of cost, agility in terms of being able to, to get those services out there quickly, um, as well as, again, the cost of providing those services. And when you think about the sheer volume, in an enterprise, you used to be able to capture every transaction for your business, whether you ran a pizza shop or whether you were a bank, you could keep you know, all of that data that pertained to your business sitting right inside a nice broom closet that was in your, uh, in your location. If you bring in devices that are always barking at the network, and the transaction rate, this is, this is talking to the network over 270 times per minute. Um, that's now happening in the enterprise. And so collecting that kind of data um, at kind of carrier scale and expecting that kind of service with enterprise applications that traverse both the enterprise and the wide area network, oh, this is the dilemma of network planners and, and IT provisioners around the world. Let's talk about performance in the network. I want to talk about NFE and how virtualization maybe is a verb now. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. You know, I'm kind of sick of NFV as everybody's talking about it. Have you, do you have NFV? NFV is a verb. Um, and NFV started out naturally um, over 15 years ago. If you think about the circuit switches that were out there those days that were big and clunky and not very agile and weren't very good at, at doing data transactions, were very much about circuit-based voice. 
soft switches were created, you know, on, on relatively common compute, but still proprietary hardware platforms. Um, if you think about where that is going, why did that happen? It happened because of the need for scale, service agility, and cost. Well, guess what? Now it's just happening with the other 270 services that network operators uh, have around the world. Uh, AT&T, you know, publicly announced about one of their uh, bandwidth on demand services that used to take you know, a matter of months to be able to provision a new service that now they can do in, in a matter of minutes. What does that do for their customer satisfaction? What does it do for their income statement? What does it do for the amount of service complexity? It's very, very simple. And that's all around, not NFV because we're adopting NFV, it's all around a verb of virtualization. Around again, service agility, cost, Okay, and being able to create a, a, a breadth of service that your clients need. David, I want to go back to uh, edge densification technologies yeah, sure. um, and really the business case behind that. Of course, a lot of uh, edge de densification stakeholders right now and creating these business models behind that. Mm -hmm. But do you think, and some may say, some analysts even may say, that it's a temporary fix until the core network is robust enough to be able to support all these billions of devices, and that could be in the next five years? Yeah, I, look, I, I think Spectrum is a limited asset, um, and, and so I think everybody understands that. And providing the best way to be able to service within that limited amount of Spectrum, you're always going to have different kinds of technology that, that are able to provide that with the Spectrum that you have today. As you get to things like 5G and you start to incorporate the needs of IoT, and some of the things we just weren't thinking about five years ago or ten years ago, um, I think you'll start to see a more comprehensive view of, of those technologies, um, as well as an efficiency. Um, it's the same that happened with uh, GSM. If you think about GSM, one of the reasons it did better uh, than CDMA overall in, in North America was not because the difference in technology standard of, of how much throughput or what the voice quality was. It was a commercially accepted ecosystem of chipsets in an open commercial environment that got the economics down to a point to be able to handle the huge growth in mobility at that point in time. I think with 5G, you're now just gonna start to see that coming out to IoT, coming out to a lot of those vertical services, dealing with things like network slicing, security, all the new things that honestly we've learned over the last five years with really, really skinned knees uh, out in the network world. Now, of course, we've been talking about the Internet of Things for at least several years now, at yeah. least broadly. Yeah. Um, are we, so is edge densification now the next iteration of IoT, or is, have we gone to another, another topic? No, I think edge uh, densification is, is one element of IoT, meaning if you're going to have uh, 50 billion devices connected to the network constantly chirping at different speeds, with different requirements, different use cases, different uh, issues associated with security and privacy. Um, look, you're going to need a heck of a lot of bandwidth and efficient use of bandwidth depending on the use case. And so getting that, those different technologies for edge densification will allow you to have those devices chirping, barking, and connecting uh, in the network to make them efficient for use to drive somebody's income statement. You know, either new revenue generating services, which actually IoT wonderful, I think it's going to be one of the examples over the last 20 years of something that is brand new, truly creating new revenue generating uh, features, as well as uh, driving down the right cost profile. And that's that infrastructure piece. If you look at 5G, a lot of that isn't just about the air interface anymore. You, you hit it on the head. How do I deal with policy? How do I deal with security? How do I bring in all of those verticals into something we grew up with that was a much simpler service set? I'd like to talk about uh, security since you mentioned it. Um, you know what, I'm gonna talk about standardization first okay. for the Internet of Things. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I would imagine that standards would apply more to the Internet of Things technologies than really any other technology in recent history. Is that, is that so? Well, look, I think like anything, um, when you look at 5G, there's a lot of Internet of Things happening today that will make us smarter, that, that aren't standard, that aren't exactly standardized, that'll make us smarter as we build the standards for tomorrow, as we get huge, heavy penetration of IoT-like services. But for things like industrial applications, those are happening today. 
Um, I do think if you're going to traverse across five to six different verticals and implement complete new business models across businesses that aren't familiar with the last hundred years in the telecommunications network, standards, ecosystem partnerships, clear lines of demarcation, that will be absolutely clear. Uh, there's no doubt with open source, you're gonna have a hybrid of an open source approach in my view, will be 80% of the overall network out there today, 70 to 80%. But for specific usage, you're still gonna have some proprietary solutions required, uh, high speed banking latency, some military applications for security, some of the industrial around oil and petroleum, where maybe open source won't be the right answer. But that will really be the way to drive those economics, again, that service agility and the scale to be able to make this all work. You know, to give you a kind of a, a little bit of an indicator of how this whole building out cloud infrastructure becomes so important and how quick it's changing. If you look at how enterprises, I talked about the broom closets and building out your own data center with those transactions. If you look at even server sales, I, I believe the rough number is in, in the US uh, over this last year, 70% of the servers sold uh, in North America last year weren't to the enterprises. It, were actually to, it was actually to service carriers. So that is to the AT&Ts, to the Verizons, to the Amazons, to the, to the, um, to the Ebays, to, to everybody offering you all those services, those 42 applications on your, uh, on your mobile phone. That's astounding, going from that environment of just a bunch of enterprises all building their own to this kind of 80-20 shift to a public versus private cloud. David, it seems like uh, privacy and security are really um, issues and topics that really go hand in hand, but at a show like Mobile World Congress where it's really a B2B discussion, it seems to me that security in the network would be more, would be paramount to a privacy discussion. Do you, would you agree? Yeah, no, I certainly agree. Um, you know, many of, the, many of the players at Mobile World Congress are serving service providers that provide all of us uh, all of our services. So starting with the core of the network and making sure we have every trap door, especially in an open source environment with a whole new host of vendors, a whole new host of application service providers um, riding onto that network to give you that service agility, you, you need to make sure you know where in the network um, you have resiliency. Um, certainly those service providers providing us the service need to make sure our private information, uh, especially in a, uh, in a commerce driven world where advertising revenues are driving a, a great force of the economy, um, where that is indeed kept private. And so they're, they're separate issues, but one, you know, rides on the other, depends on the other. So we're seeing a lot right now on network resiliency as it pertains to a whole new host of players in building out a virtualized network as well as at the same time, making sure that, that the boundaries of subscriber data and your data are kept absolutely secure and your privacy isn't jeopardized. And David, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, thank you.